Hey guys, how you doing? Um, been a minute. Good to see you. Good to see you again. Um, today, um, this week I've been working with a gifted writer, artist, uh, Andrew Albert. Uh, he's from Nashville. And uh, as predicted, he's, uh, uh, I don't want to use the word country because I'm not sure there is such uh, a, a pure genre anymore as, as country. Um, country is, uh, it ain't your granddaddy's country anymore. And uh, Andrew gave me the, uh, the challenge of, uh, you know, trying to uh, maintain links to the past, but also make sure it's modern. And, and he brought me something interesting. His engineer, uh, Rico Gonzalez, who's excellent, um, they're both from Dallas, by the way, um, used Superior Drummer, my buddy Pat Thrall's um, drum programming and, and sample system is pretty incredible. And uh, with the attempt to make it sound live, Rico's a drummer, so he, he kind of performed the parts, which is something you might not be able to do yourself. But I just want to show you that you can take programmed drums and, and make them fit in a world that's really, really got some of the best live drummers, as opposed to dead drummers, in the world. I mean, you know, I've said it before, I think the best musicians in the world are in Nashville. Uh, best songwriters. So anyway, I want to show you kind of how I approached contributing to, to, to program drums and making them sound a little bit live. I, I think that might be applicable to um, everything from hip-hop, certainly to rock, to pop. It, it might just be you want to do the, the verses kind of dry and the, the, uh, the chorus is kind of live, kind of like what uh, uh, I did for Rhett Lawrence along with another engineer, Steve McMillan, on uh, uh, Miss Independent, Kelly Clarkson. The verses are programmed and the, and the hooks are live. So let's get to it. Let me play you a, a before. Now this before already has a little bit of ambience built into it because uh, the engineer Rico constructed a, a couple of ambient tracks. Now you can construct your own ambient tracks several ways several ways. You can take, uh, what I recommend is find a room in your house that's got nice sound to it, you know, not too dark, not too uh, thuddy, and not too reverby. Put two speakers in the room, hook those up to a left and right, and then send your, your drums, two track, create a two track, send that out to those speakers, put two mics in front of the speakers, maybe the more, the farther away from the mic, from the speaker, the farther away from the speaker you place the mic, the more room ambience you're going to get. Start off with like maybe a foot and then record that and then I'll show you how to treat that and mix it back in and you'll, your, your drums are going to sound like John Bonham if you want them to. Okay, here's the track, the drum track as we've incorporated all these elements along with some EQ and compression. Okay, let's attack this. Let's attack a couple of elements individually and show you what we did. Okay, amb our ambient track that, that that you can create with the speakers in the room. It should sound like this. And that would work for maybe, you know, a soft kind of sound. But but we want a little edgier sound. So let's throw on the uh, 1176. Okay, now mixed in with the song, this is what's screwing up. Make sure this worked right. No, see, it doesn't get my kicks. God doesn't get half the stuff. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay, I mixed in with the song. This is without it. With it. Can we exaggerate it so you can hear it? Now, now let's check out the overheads because the, the symbols, the symbols kind of are very important to impart a, a sense of liveness. So, with the symbols, you want to increase the attack with your EQ, maybe a little top end EQ, 
Uh, you might try a plug-in like Bittersweet or um, uh, one of those transient enhancers. I think uh, Oxford makes one and SPL makes a great one. I'm not going to go into that. We did that already. But just increase the attack on the symbol a little bit. Okay, so um, this is our overhead without anything. There again, you can create that with our speakers in the room. Now, on the last track I showed you, I added a little bit of Brocasti uh, a m chamber. I'm going to show you that on this. Okay, let's see what we got here. A little compression. Little SSL. Add the, the, the chamber. Exaggerate it. That that contributes to the to the vibe. Now this is this one is very important. The snare, because of its because of its importance and its and its and its place in the mix, the snare is the downbeat. Without a downbeat, we have we don't have rock. We don't have hip hop. We've got some kind of classical music. The snare is so vital, so important. Um, not as important as vocals, but pretty close. So we're gonna we're gonna Jack Joseph pleguys the snare so it, so it gets longer. The, the, there's ambience in the sample because it's a real sample. Pat recorded them in a, um, I think it was in a studio in New York. He'll call and tell us. Uh, or he's going to be on the show. And uh, so if you compress the snare, you get more of the real room it was recorded in. Let me show you this. This is neat. Okay. Here's the snare. All right. Not bad, huh? Okay, so let's let's put a little EQ on it. All right, now let's add a little reverb. Those are the reverbs that, that I got from Rico, and then these are the ones I added. These are the ones I added. This is the same A&M chamber. I love that. All right, now here's a little, oh man, I need herb. P.A. de resistance, what's the word? P. 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 Peace de resistance, I don't know. Make up your own damn French word. I don't know French. I know some French people. But anyway, this is, I think, this is, to me, this is the favorite thing I'm going to show you today. The favorite thing? Okay, let's add in our parallel compressed snare. Uh, uh, this is the EQ. This is the compression. Okay. I'm going to mute it so you can't hear it. You can see it. You can hear the compressor grabbing the, the snare and lengthening. The, the type of cr uh, compressor you use is not that important. Try ratio of six. Start off with like a 15 to 20 millisecond attack time. Um, maybe as high as 25 if you want a little more transients to come through. I'm not interested in getting any transients from the from this. I, I just want reverb, and then and then adjust your release time so that. It gives you the, the tempo you want. Turns out the, the the 160, this old 160 from UAD, not old UAD plugin, but the old 160 that's a new UAD plugin, the ta attack and release are perfect for me. So guys, and summing up, um, why go through all this trouble? Well, there's some forms of music. Uh, that, that We wouldn't want to do this in. It, it would just give 
kind of the wrong sound, you know, like some of the some of the uh, hip hop stuff, some of the dance stuff. We try to keep that the opposite of what we're trying to do here. I'm giving you this as an option. Like, um, it's not something just for rock or country music. You can use it in hip hop. Um, you can use it anytime you want. But the problem we're trying to solve is to is to give the listener the impression that he that that he or she is listening to a live drummer, a, a performed part. The the the, the, the parts themselves can be played by a real drummer, they were, so there's not any things where you'd need to be a six-handed drummer to play something. And what we're trying to do is take the key components of, a, of, a, of an entire drum track that was programmed from samples, take the key components, and in this case we took three components and, made, and gave the entire track the impression that it was a live performance recorded in a, in a, in a studio or recorded live anywhere you want. So the three elements, let me review. We took the snare, we lengthened the ambience that was in the sample that Pat Thrall recorded that was part of the Superior Drummer. We lengthened that, the decay on that with compression. We took our overhead mics that we created with the speaker and mic technique I showed you. And um, we added a little ambience to that, a little compression to that to, to lengthen and get the, the, the amount of room noise, that we room, room sound that we wanted and then we took a, a, an ambient mic, you might say, or a room mics, stereo room mics, and we, we treated that so that it emphasized the, the, the decay in that natural space. We wanted more. So com we were, we're using compression in all three cases to get a longer decay sound or the natural reverb that, that was on the samples to, to lengthen them. I, I think I, I think I, I think I, I'm uh, I think I'm imparting this information to you in a way that you can digest it. But as always, experiment, experiment, experiment. If you're if you're a hip hop guy, maybe just try this on a bridge and then go back to dry. Uh, I mentioned earlier a song that Rhett Lawrence programmed the verses dry, the choruses live. There's all kinds of applications for this, um, and you don't have to do it on just drums. You can do this on, the same technique on guitars on pianos. You can take a eight bar section of your of your track, print it as a two track, run it through this these same techniques, over compress it and mic it from a live room and, 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 and get a little eight bar section that's really cool. So it, it, as always these things can be applied any number of ways. Hope that hope that hope that gives you some ideas.